You know, there are so many screen queens, and we're always talking about screen queens, screen queens, but what about a screen king? Come on. Matthew, Come on. you're a scream I don't, king. I don't know if that's the case. The old, I think, the older I get, the more I'm definitely identified in this in this demographic, in the in the horror world. Let me just throw down. Look at your resume. It's okay. crazy. Okay. Um, yeah, there's scream, but thirteen uh, ghosts, yes. Scooby Doo, Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's is is a big deal. That was a, that's a game changer. Look, when you're in a career and you're coming around third base, right. headed for home. Look at you. Look at the nasty things that you have become. Look how small you are. How worthless you are. You are wretched, blood little beast. I made you. To have a franchise like that is very exciting. Did you ever think that you would be one of the faces of this genre? Um, no. I still don't know if I really <laughs> am. I think there are a lot of people out there who have no idea who I am. But look, it's, it's hum it is humbling. Um, you know, I've been around for a long time. But I do want to say, you are doing something that is amazing right now with your new tequila macabre. Yeah. And it's more of a story than just a bottle of tequila. There is a message and there is something to go along with each and every bottle for fans. Yeah, uh, we started a year ago. We started a company called Find Familiar Spirits. And we build high-end spirit experiences around fandoms. And our first question we ask ourselves is like, what do we give fans, not yeah. what we take from fans? And so for us, you know, we started with like a Dungeons and Dragons themed bourbon, uh, and we just launched today of all days. We just launched um, Macabre Spirits. It's a tequila for the horror community. I've been an actor, yeah. and so there's something about taking, not waiting for this crazy town to offer me a job, right? To take sort of control of my own destiny and to build things and put energy into stuff that I can directly impact. It's you know, and what it does in the world. So it's it's very, um, it's a new chapter in my life, and it's very exciting. Speaking of new chapters in people's lives, Scream, yes. coming back, Nev Campbell is coming back. Well, I, I have no idea. Scary night, isn't it? With the murders and all, it's like right out of a horror movie or something. I love what the, the guys were doing the last couple of movies, uh, but to have Nev back, she is literally an icon. Yes. Um, and she's an amazing actress, and so I think he's going to give her an opportunity to really own that role even more so. Um, and I think they're going to do fantastic things together. I'm excited to see it. Um, any chance you ever go back or they figure out a way to get you back in uh, there? Listen, I am always going to advocate for, for Stu to come back. Tonight at 10 o'clock, I'm going to drop a TV on my head to prove that <laughs> he can live through such horrific things. Um, I Look, I, for me, if it made sense for uh, the fans, if it made sense for the franchise, I would love to come back, but they certainly don't need me, that's for sure. But it would be cool for them it to figure out a way. No, it's for a horror find, movie. It's a horror movie. No one dies in horror movies, really. Yeah, ever, I mean, exactly. Ever. Like, come on. It would be fantastic. You were really supportive of Nev when she decided to step away, and now that she's coming back. Why? Why? Because you guys go back way, way back. Yeah, it was. A, uh, look, I think Moose is fantastic, and I, um, I thought that whole thing was very complicated. I thought yep. Hollywood was in a very complicated place. Yep. Um, and look, and I think that women need to be paid as equal, if not more so than men, because they deserve it. Uh, she is the heart and soul of that franchise, yeah. and I will stand behind the fact that they've got to pay her. I have a sneaking suspicion her coming back for seven. By the way, you're working on this tequila, but you're still very busy and you have a new show. I do, well, yeah, I'm uh, I'm on season two of Cross, which is a show that comes out yeah. next year. Season one's dropping right now on Amazon. Um, I just did Killer Cakes where I was a host. I was the host, I host. How crazy is that? I'm reading the teleprompter, it was very intimidating. I don't know how you do Do you that. want it? Yeah, listen, welcome tonight. <laughs> How much more do you appreciate in every job you go to, you look at a little differently than when you're with the number one franchise in the world, you're flying on private jets and you're young and you're just crazy? You just don't, you just don't have any idea that's, that, that this industry, all creatives, have this ebb and flow. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, being towards, you know, like I said, towards the end of a career rather than the beginning, um, it's... It's, it's, there's a wisdom about my life now that I really I appreciate this life mm -hmm. and I appreciate it much differently now than I did when I was a boy. I started as a kid. I mean, my first movie was 22 years old. So here I am, 54 years old. I, I'm just so deeply appreciative of what's happening. All right, five nights yeah. coming back. How much fun is that? And so can you great. give us any kind of insight? Um, 
I always come back is my last line of the movie. So I am, you know, I'm coming back. So that's good. Uh, yeah, I think that, look, here's the great news is that um, I think the fans fell in love with what we did. I think that Scott was is the shepherd of this incredible project. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that collectively the filmmakers listened to some of the criticism that they got. Yeah. Um, and I think they're growing as filmmakers. And I think this film is going to be um, tonally a little different. I think we're going to have a lot more things that the fans wanted to see the first movie. What does that mean? Um, well, I, I, that's like, not such I actor really, speak. I, really, I wanted, I, like, and I was actor yeah, speak. Like that was like, right. Right. everyone played great. Well, thank the line. Look, I think there's going to be, a, I think it's going to be an action packed film. I think it's going to be right. very exciting. And I right. think fans, it's a, again, I think this is fan centric and I think they're going to love it. You know, thinking back on the Scooby-Doo films. And <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to do that? Let's just all pause and think about Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Zoinks. <laughs> Zoinks! You can still do it. You can do your driver. I mean, it's the greatest yeah. job ever. Yeah, I still do it after all these years, so it's fun. What was it like working with that cast? Because really, we didn't, at the time, we didn't look and say, these are all these breakout stars. But it really was a great cast. Yeah, it was a great cast. Um, you know, James Gunn wrote an incredible script. He's gone on to do obviously amazing things. Roger Gaznell. Look, I, I think the funny thing is that movie, again, a little like Scream, I think that that movie's more popular now than it ever was. Um, I think that, I have a theory about that. I, I feel like right around that time, minivans, a DVD stopped being sold, and minivans got stuck with the last movie that got stuck in it. And I think a lot of them, that was Scooby 1 and 2. So, and look, that to me, I, you know, for a long time, I had this sort of downturn in my career, and I was like, ah, it's because I did this big, stupid movie. Um, the older I get, the more I appreciate the longevity right. of it. Right. What, like, playing that is literally an iconic character. And having insane. the opportunity to like sort of, um, you know, I could find a kid anywhere and do the shaggy voice and sort of make their day. So that's a gift that keeps on giving. Doing the voice keeps on giving. It's just awesome. It is also great to mess with you when you're playing golf and you shank a ball <laughs> and be like, rrr, screw me, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> still, it's so good. It's fun. And listen, um, yeah, and that cast was fantastic. And you, you know, anytime you're doing a movie whose lead isn't there, right, you know, there's right. nothing there, there's no Scooby-Doo, you know, and so that, that was a big challenge, but um, I'm proud of it now. I used to be embarrassed and now I'm proud.